someone in his family in the um, in the hospital and be excused. Susan Stevenson is here. Um, Vivian Bishop had trees small in her house, and she has significant damage to her house, so mm -hmm. she's not going to talk her. Uh, Sean Gatewood, yes, here. Uh, Maddie Hall came in, and but she has another meeting at the same time, I think, here, so. Uh, Linda Parker is um, not going to be here. Excuse, Tanza is here. And Ms. Juanita is here. Um, and Asleen, thank you, Laura. And now Asleen Flores has consented, uh, Florence has consented to be our new financial secretary. She'll be assisting, um, uh, oh my gosh. Marjorie. Marjorie, yes, Marjorie Jackson as our uh, treasurer. Trisha Lassiter and Adam Drucker, they're both excused. They went up to the Fair Fight Action at a big event tonight in Atlanta. And they went up to represent up there and find out what was going on and, and represent us too. Because I know I, that's a cause that I'd love to get more involved in. We can talk about that later. But, uh, Hello. We change hat to yes. Um, and Reggie is here. Awesome. Gloria um, is excused. Ruth Carpenter. And Ms. Deborah Lowry. Claudia Muller. Chrissy Parker, Edna Foster, Ralph Jones, Corey McDougall. Does anyone know her by chance? Well, um, her email address is um, wrong that I have, and I called and left her a message and texted her to try to get the correct one. So. Um, Okay. Jose Scott. Is that where we do with that? The student who's here to me? I think I can know someone who knows her. Okay. If so, just let her know that maybe check her email or you can get the information from it to me. Thank you. Okay. And there you are. Carrie Underwood. I almost said Carrie Underwood. Is anyone? <laughs> 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 <Is> that connection? Mary <laughs> <laughs> Garcia. And John is excused. He's got a play that is in the final rehearsals. Um, or if you count. <clears throat> you know what? I think I need to check for something. I think he may be excused. Okay. Um, and Judy Goulet. Um, Doug McLeod is still working with a gentleman uh, helping to clear some like green stuff, uh, which I think would be interesting to see what the other offices change. Yeah. Um, Walter Nesbitt, Carlo Neuroff, and Jenny Neuroff. Um, Adrian Chester is excused. Sandra Ellison is excused, she's next door. Karen Huntsman, um, she, her father passed away. And so, um, anybody that's been here a little while, do we usually send a card or something like that? Maybe, I think that would be good. Yeah, okay, do that. Marjorie Jackson is excused. Uh, Teddy Reese also excused. Erin Torber, Toya Tucker, Val, um, Sandra Hunley. I thought I was like, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I mean, Kent is excused. Tom Daniels here. Rusty Oliver, not here. Rick Parker, yes, and Dominic Curtis, awesome. 
Thank you all very much for being here. Okay, let's dive into the agenda. I want to talk a little bit before I move on from that about the about why we keep uh, call attendance like that and why we want to make sure that um, absences are excused. Uh, for I've been on the committee for about uh, more than a year, and I I know there's a lot of people that I just never met before that were on that were holding post seats. So in the bylaws, it says that. You know, I want to give people a chance to participate. You know, we have posted it on Facebook, sent it out via email, talked about it at meetings. So people should understand that you should let us know if you're going to be absent. Um, because if you have a bunch of absences, then you have, say, you have a post that should have five people in it, and there's only two that ever really participate. That's not fair. You know, that district doesn't get the representation or the coverage that it should be getting. So there are ways to, uh, you know, when Sandra called the elections um, for the post committee, she did not require sitting post members to have to come back and compete for their seats. So, um, so we have people that, you know, I, I don't know if they're ever going to come again. Honestly, I haven't seen in months and months and months. So somebody can be removed from the post committee by not doing their job, but also in the section under vacancies for post committee members, it says that if you have that you may be removed if you have two or more unexcused absences in a calendar year. So we're in March, people are getting a head start, you know. But um, they also have to be notified and they have an opportunity to come in and talk to the group if they so desire. But I'm going to be paying attention to that because I want us to be an active board. You know, not just a board where people say, hey, I'm on the Democratic Committee, but don't come and participate. So just that's that's why I'm doing that. Um, all right. Next, if you would, take a look, and some of you will probably already have, at the back of your agenda, it has the draft. Um, Minutes from the state committee election. Do you have one? Yeah, right. Please take a look and then um, I'll hear a motion to, we'll give you take any questions and then I'll hear a motion to approve that. Sorry. Everybody uh, have time to look? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Okay, great. Not sure the person who made the money. I think it was Claudia who first. And then the second was Chris. Chris Parker. The voice you should recognize. I do. <laughs> 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 uh, question Can, we all, can a digital copy of this also be sent out? Uh, my, my, Yes, and what I'd like to do, and I was just talking to Sandra before she went into her meeting next door. You know, paper is nice, right. but um, I'd like to be able to email you all a copy, and I will have some because I know Ms. Juanita and Ms. Ella don't have email. But that we, I would like to be able to email everybody a copy of the agenda for that meeting. And also, I would like to be able to email you. Like, for example, when, when uh, Pam is done with the minutes in the next couple of days, to email it to you to read and to, and to email me back to, to either bring up questions or vote to approve the minutes. Part, Ms. Parliamentarian, does that, is there any red flag there for you? Well, you can ask them for if there are any changes. Mm -hmm. but, and I can wait till yeah. you know, we hear back from you. I'll tell you yeah. either ready like four days to respond or oh, something. Um, you can respond back, but it would be better to wait until we're in the full meeting to ask for a few. Okay. Or else you're going to have 40 different email things. Um, okay. But, and then, if there are and then there, and then there are other people who, who don't have email, who we 
need to have our own. So you can send them out, and then if anyone it catches anything, but then you can have two copies that the next yeah. meeting and then the first meeting. I just worry that, and I, I understand. That's why I was kind of thinking, you know, because it'll be two, we're going to talk about our calendar coming up in a moment, but it will be two months in between first meeting and meeting. So um, it might be hard to remember or, or whatever. And thanks for being here. Uh, so, okay, so um, yeah, let's try to, I'm going to try to make things as efficient as we can by using email communication. So definitely check your email every couple of days, um, especially when we're getting close to the post committee. Okay. Um, I made a big mistake um, at the election uh, last week. And that is that uh, Ms. Ella Lewis, who participated in the state, um, the state committee, a state committee delegate for many, many years, gave me a letter. And I put it in a, uh, my green folder, thought of it, and I cannot find it now. I didn't read it last week, and now I don't have it to read to you today. But with her permission, uh, we've chatted. I wanted to just let you know that she sent her sincerest thanks for the opportunity to serve all of these years and uh, look forward to seeing what the new delegates were, um, were going to bring back to the state in uh, months to come. Would you like to add anything else, Ms. Juanita or Ms. Oh, I would just want to add to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to still go by the thanks. And then it's all stand to give it a look. Agenda um, tornado relief. I know that, I mean, we all have heard and seen the devastation that has gone on in Alabama, but also here in Georgia. Um, I didn't know whether anybody might be either have a direct line to um, a group that might be collecting um, supplies that we can contribute to, or uh, whether anybody, if, if they do know, whether anybody might want to read that up and you know, but I've seen some things on Facebook that are collecting, I think, a Coldwell, Coldwell Banker, and you can call the 211 line as well and get information about where to um, send any assistance. But is that something that we want to coordinate as a group and put out and, and collect, or you know, does anyone have a connection there? I have a connection with Georgia, is that not helping? I think that would be, uh, you know, appropriate. Uh, what do you, who is, like, what are they collecting? Can you let me know? Yeah. And I'll put it out on, um, on Facebook and via email so that if anybody wants to donate, whatever it is, they're, you know, I've, I've seen diapers, um, sanitary and hygienic supplies, um, lots of other things. Some some groups, I think over in um, Beauregard, they're saying no more clothes, um, that kind of stuff. So I want to give something that's easy to transport, that's necessary. Um, go ahead. Don't forget about Thomas. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. She said she has people in Georgia. Well, 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 Harris and Thomas. Yeah. yeah. Primarily on our Harris connections, but they're helping Thomas. Yes, Thomas. Yeah, I have a friend who's a pastor in Thomas. Can you see it? Yeah. You know, and maybe we can do, maybe there's a similar need that we can zone in on. I rode by on two of the other jobs here to the initiative to talk to me there. Today. There was a little small church there. Mm -hmm. I have no idea when I read by off my bulletin pad. It's just rubble. It is gone. Mm -hmm. There is nothing. I could tell that there was a pew, but it, it is gone. It was mm -hmm. just a okay. thing. My friend is a little bitty African American church. Mm -hmm. and it's gone. I just feel like that would be, um, I know I want to help, but then you think, okay, well, why don't we do it as a group? Okay. And something I forgot to say. Oh, uh, yes, here. I was thinking about that one to say with that how we want to bring it. Yeah, once we get it, we'll, we'll put it out in all of our new locations. Yes. Instead of sending stuff 
a lot of times in an emergency, stuff gets to be a problem mm -hmm. in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Couldn't we just make a financial contribution and let um, whichever group we give the money to mm -hmm. spend the money on what is most needed in that particular area? We could do that for sure. And if you all, you know, what I was thinking of is individual contributions given as a group. <laughs> Not necessarily, I mean, the MCDC can certainly like uh, we can vote on that whether we wanted to make a donation, um, because it's local. Um, but I was thinking more of maybe individual donations, and if people, people maybe they say they could use gift cards, you know, for the, for the people who are affected to go out and buy their own. That would be something that's easily collectible that you don't have to, you know. So, um, definitely understand. It's when I when I when I give when it's after a, a tragedy like this, it's usually in the form of money because that way people who know what they're doing and they spend it properly. Yes, Brian. Could we learn from the church in 12 and 11 things they need is transportation? If they had gift cards and money, but they may not have cars anymore, because one of the descriptions I heard of the storm was that cars were just blown away it's like toys. Right. So people may need rides to get to where. Need to be taken care of things. Okay, let us know what they need and say with you, um, Tammy, with the group of Harris County, and then we'll find a commonality um, and a focus and we'll get on it. And look for that in the next like, day. Because, you know, we, got, we got teams coming in now, and we're right now we're in our church is going right now to give it to folks who are going to stay. Yeah, I saw that put out there. They were asking if anybody would, and actually, I saw something kind of cool. And that is that Airbnbs have already started putting out an ad. I saw it on Facebook saying that if anybody has a spare Airbnb, Airbnb that's not being rented, could they possibly use it for people who need a place to stay now? So that's pretty cool. All right. Um, I am, one thing I forgot to say in my, actually, no, I'm still on it. Okay, sorry. I was like, wait a minute, that's next. The next one, and so I'm going to come back to Deborah because she's my parliamentarian. It says, talk about how I'm informal, not a parliamentarian, still learning. Okay, so um, I have held lots of meetings before, but not usually using um, Robert's Rules of Order. And so a lot of times, you know, don't be surprised to hear me look at Deborah and say, what, do we have to vote on that or, or whatever? So please be patient with me in that regard. Um, also, and so when we're talking about this putting uh, an effort together to assist in some um, help for the tornado victims, is that something we need to work on? Mm -hmm. I think it should be a nice try. Okay, thank you guys for all this. So I move that, um, that you put the information out for us to do something individually as a, and presented as a group for the tornado relief effort. Second. Call in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right. Great. I would like to make a suggestion. Would you make a motion? You would say your name and second because it's hard for the person to take uh, a minute to know who's in what. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the left, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, yes. Also, in the motion, after you say, um, Christian makes the motion in a second, before it's actually voted on, we should ask, are there any questions? Okay, right. gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> do we want the exact wording of the motion to be written? Yes. Yeah. If yes. we do, you may have to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> the motion is for the MCDC to. Um, Collect items, individual donations, I should say, and present them as a group for the tornado relief effort in Georgia. Now, are you donating just perishables? I mean, non-perishables. So I'm going to give a ten-minute point to the and then I'll put it out. <laughs> All right, great. The last thing before we move into the street to the calendar, et cetera, is that I want to say that I detest long meetings. Mm. I cannot um, 
I get hot and, <laughs> and distracted and just my brain gets tired, especially sometimes we have this at the end of the evening and everybody's had a full day. So if I ever um, seem to kind of try to gracefully cut somebody off and suggest that we maybe move to the next point, please don't take that as um, rudeness. Just take that as me trying to keep things moving and that um, and we can always follow up later electronically or, or that kind of thing. Um, and I appreciate your also effort to make sure that we stay on topic and that kind of thing. All right, thanks. Next, meeting calendar. Now the executive board um, and I met last night and we set this calendar. We talked a lot about, you know, should we have meetings, should we have posting meetings every month? Um, Sandra uh, in the last year has had them quarterly uh, call other meetings when needed. I found a good compromise and, and we agreed that it should that post committee meetings would be every other month. And then the other month in between would be a some type of an event, uh, somebody coming to address us, um, you know, just something other than a post committee meeting. Well, okay. Right. The post committee meetings are the only meetings in which I will be taking role and it will be doing the whole excused absence. So um, just that gives everybody a little bit of time. And, and the dates are on your um, minutes. We want to do, um, Sandra has a standing meeting, as I believe Maddie does too, and a couple other people on the first Tuesday of every month. So we decided to make these meetings on the second Tuesday of every month. Um, and you see the dates here. And we went out uh, 12 calendar months. So uh, we went out to uh, January 14th and 2020. So you can put those on your calendars. We'll also put them in our website and, and every other place that we have dates. Then alternately, the special event or whatever type of other meeting that we have that's not a post committee meeting, those dates are listed next on the second Tuesday of every other month. And then finally, um, executive board meetings and all of these meetings. Yes, Rhonda. I'm not mistaken. Sandra. That was Sandra, 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 Sandra. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough because Wednesdays aren't really good. Mondays so often are holidays that it's hard to want to schedule a meeting then. We'll make it. Yep, we will. And one of the things is, you know, you know, we're going to try to email out information right away. People won't have to um, wait two more months till the next post committee meeting for minutes. They'll get it probably within the week, so it won't be as much of a uh, information delay for those who miss um, a meeting. So, now, executive board meetings, and yes, Pat. Um, so since you have these dates established, did you also reserve the space here? We reserved, and I'm going to address that in just a minute. Okay, so, and you have the dates out, so now we can actually this is out until January 2020. Yes, and we will. Um, I was gonna. I thought maybe we would call for a vote on all of the dates um, when I got to the end of that part. Is that or should we go? Uh, no, you can ask for us to vote on these together. Okay. Collect. Um. Yes. The things that we need to vote on can be put under action. Or an action item to, and I would hold them. Oh, I see. Okay. And I would hold them in the agenda. Right. And uh, we can discuss it, but if we have to vote on them, we can vote on them at the end as, as opposed to after every bullet point, bullet point, point to have a vote. Okay. If, you know, if it's have like a group, like these. Right. Things. You would only do things that are related to right. the group. Everything else should be voted on individually. Okay. No, we can vote on them individually, but we don't have to have to each time. So each time we need them. We we discuss them, but then at the end when we have to vote on things. We just, no, you're right. Some things we do, some things we don't. All right. Thanks. Um, I'm not mad if we wait till the end. All right. 
Thanks for this. I know it may seem like no, it was, but it's but it's not because I need to learn it and, and we need to figure it out. Um, last week, the executive board meetings, and I listed those on there because all of these meetings are open to the public. So um, the executive board meetings we decided to have two weeks prior to the um, post committee meetings, and so that would only be every other month um, for executive board, and the the um, the dates are listed below. As for locations, we um, we put the word out actually a couple of weeks ago um, via email uh, that would be a meeting space. And Toya and Reggie stepped up um, last week at the election and said, you know, our church, uh, Revelation Missionary Baptist Church, Augustino Road, would be willing to host the meetings. And so um, we we are going to, I had already reserved the library up until now until May. So we're going to kind of use, the library is where people are used to seeing us meet. They have good parking, they have, you know, uh, audio visual equipment that's, that we know how to use. So um, I, I emailed Toya and Reggie today to say that um, I, We'd like to take advantage of their um, offer on a, you know, when we can't get the library, or if we have a function or an event where we need a little more um, space and where we need to make a little more noise, maybe, and, and where that then would be advantageous. They have a, you have a big gym, ready? Yeah. yeah. His wife is the pastor, and, and so we have right now the room reserved. Oh, let me make a note. Um, going back to the post committee meetings. We had already reserved April for the first Tuesday, not the second. So we are still going to do April on the date that it's listed here, um, which is going to be a special event, not a post committee meeting. So that's April 2nd. But after that, we will then move. So we are, I will be in charge of booking the, or one of my, my lovely executive board members will be assigned to that way. But right now, I've been going on really book days in advance here. So, um, so that's that's what we've got so far. The executive board meetings, we need to find a, a small room for that, like a place where we maybe host. You know, I think we might get, I've never seen more than 10 or 12 at an executive board meeting. So, um, something smaller. Uh, but we'll put that out. Um, the locations we listed um, in, as TBD or to be announced um, on each of them, unless we already have it booked, and then we'll make sure that it's up. Any questions? Yes. I was going to say that before they say that committee meetings, um, what is my other place? Um, common place downtown. The Iron Man. Iron Man. The yep. room upstairs may be. And in town has a really nice room yep. in the back. Yes. Um, so those are all good options. Okay. So any other questions about our meetings? Yes, Tonda. Mandatory on the post committee meetings, correct? Yes. And that's the only one that's you know mandatory and that you need to um, email or, or text an excuse me or a, a note to be excused. Okay. All right, then can I hear a motion to approve these dates? Finally, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. All right, next, subcommittees. Um, as some of you know, who have served on any subcommittees here uh, before, in in interest of being all inclusive in the past, I think we have a lot of sub, subcommittees that actually duplicate services that, you know, somebody could say, well, it seems like membership is doing that one, but public relations is sort of doing that too. So in an effort to um, 
to narrow the focus and define them a little more uh, specifically, we have, I, I'm, I'm putting forward a list of subcommittees. Um, some of them are just name changes. Some of them are gonna kind of be a, a little bit of a combination of former committees, but I wanna bring them to you. Let them, let you know why we, we chose them this way and get your feedback. Um, you know, basically, we talked last night in our executive board meeting, and we talked to many of you about what we kind of want the MCDC to do in the coming year. Um, we want to make ourselves more visible in the community. We want to be represented more in the community. So not just seeing us in a parade going down Broadway, but also having the democratic point of view, the, the, the helping people centric point of view represented in the community. Another, um, another area that we wanted to focus on was um, recruiting and mentoring good Democrats to run for office and supporting that. That's another um, focus. Let's see. Darian, got anything? You had, Darian had a great point about the board of health. Oh, um, my focus, my hope for the MCTC, and particularly the use of subcommittees, is that we become primarily an outward facing group. Um, we spend a lot of time worrying about the intricacies and how we operate for each other and with each other. And as she was speaking, I would like, personally, I would like us to focus on the more humanitarian aspects that come with being a Democrat and teaching people to be good Democrats and at first, good citizens. So my primary focus and the involvement, my involvement in MCDC is to make the community stronger. And I believe that is done through Democratic values. So a lot of the reworking of the subcommittees will be with the idea and the hope that we have more action in the community and that we are specific to the community. Because the Democratic committee, we feel very cookie cutter where we go. And the best committees of any type are specific to the location. So I want us to feel like we are built into the foundation of Columbus as much as we possibly can. So the subcommittees will be reworked with that focus in mind. Now I don't I can't tell you that we have the definite like a written definition down for all of the subcommittees quite yet. Um, but we do have um, I can tell you and I see here is written set. Um, I can tell you that uh, we have their names and what they're going to focus on in a general manner. Um, and that what I plan to do is um, once we chat a little bit here, get some feedback, then we'll take that back. We will rework or, or you know, we will amend and, and write descriptions. Um, and then, you know, so I thought, well, gee, can I get it together in time to get, have sign up sheets for everybody tonight? But honestly, no. So what I'd like to do is send them out to everyone. And I have a big sign in front of my, behind my computer, and it says, call Juanita and Emma, if I'm trying to remember to uh, do that, because I'm such an email person. But we'll email those out to you. Everyone can read them and decide where they'd like to work. And then email me back, I'll keep a roster, and then we will, and I'm also gonna ask if you would like to be a leader in that. The leadership positions for, I read in the bylaws, um, the leadership commit com positions for the subcommittees are annual, our 12 month annual. So, um, you know, we'll see if there's a, if there's a, a strong, you know, if people wanna keep doing their leadership thing, you know, express that in the email. If someone's ready to say, ah, and then I'll step aside and see what somebody else can do, then that too. Um, but this is part of the foundation. We have our dates. Now we're going to try to get the subcommittees together, get people on them so that we can start to work. So let me share with you what we come up with. Uh, we're going to definitely keep bylaw revision uh, because our bylaws, if you go through and read them, um, there's some great stuff in there, but there's also uh, stuff that needs to be tweaked. And we can't necessarily 
wait for the state. The state was going to be redoing its bylaws, and then we were going to um, take them and base ours off of theirs. But I believe ours are probably already based a lot on theirs. And we can, once we get their guidelines, we can revise accordingly. Um, and I saw, Harry, did I make your comment from before, or did we already go past it? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, well, actually, I was going to ask uh, a few questions regarding um, the bylaws revision and also the strategic plan. Uh, so, has that all, I don't know if you've mentioned the strategic plan. No, I haven't. But uh, when I do, right. I'll, I'll, I'll write to you. Okay. And, uh, and also, <coughs> that's the second question regarding bylaws and bylaws revision. Um, or, or, well, I'll just try to probably wait until you go through the And it's probably best to, you know, I'm going to say, you know, bylaws pretty right. standard. Right. Um, and just as an FYI, Harry has given me uh, an extensive, very nice document with with um, suggestions for bylaw stuff. So I hope that you will be a part of that um, committee for when it's time to sign up. Um, Toya, you good? Okay. All right. Um, so yes, I would like us to work. And Dominic, did I see you sort of talk about bylaws? Okay. 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 Um, all right. Financial and strategic planning. Um, that will be a company. You know, we have we have a treasurer. We have a financial secretary. But I think it would be nice to combine to add to that group um, people who might like to help with the budget process, making sure that the budget process or the line items in the budget is relevant and tracking on what's actually being spent and that, and that kind of thing. So, and then planning for what we're going to need in the future. You know, um, we only have this now, but we think we're going to need this at, the, at this time. And, you know, how are we going to get there? Also, you know, when I'm saying that, you know, that's like linked with fundraising. So many of these um, committees are going to be linked with others. And there's no way around that that I can see. We talked till we were almost falling asleep last night, and we just were like, ah, we had to kind of break from it and come back and, and address it today. So, um, so that one. Fundraising, straight, in, straight up. Now, the planning committee was meant to, was written up as a, as planning for events, planning for, um, basically like planning for the every other meetings, bringing people in to talk to us about, you know, one cause or, or topic or another. Um, but it was also a really, really, really broad um, write-up definition. It was going down a lot of the things that, that we feel are really actually um, functions of the executive committee. So, and then there was education in another committee that was, you know, we, that we thought would be a good mesh with, with the planning and with events. So we are calling it so that it's more, you know, we think that strategic planning is not necessarily going to be done in an in-depth, you know, it doesn't seem like strategic planning kind of goes with events planning and education. So we are kind of claiming that as an executive board function. And we want to call this now events and education. So that that group is in charge of planning, uh, special events, noticing things in the you know that we might be lacking, some areas where we need some uh, special light shown on it to bring in uh, experts or just anyone to kind of shine a light. So um, that is what that events and education is. Um, membership and outreach. We're going to talk more in depth about membership right after this, but. Um, Outreach is, I, I was the chair um, of the um, Public Relations and Communications Subcommittee. So I was trying to do the communication side of it, but also the outreach, you know, being visible in the community, being, uh, being out in public places so that other Democrats might see, oh, what are they doing? What's going on there? That looks kind of cool. Do I want to be involved? Um, and so, 
I think that's, I think what we want to do is separate the outreach from the communication. Communication will just be communication to our members, but also communication to the outside world. Um, so making sure that communication would be making sure that our website's up to date, that we have a Facebook presence and a social media presence, that we have, that we get information to our, um, to our members about any changes in meetings or about, you know, that we, that we communicate in as many ways as possible. Also, sending out press releases and that kind of thing. Now, some of what that, you know, I think that Tammy as our um, corresponding secretary is going to be involved with that a bit because she, part of her duties are to communicate things to the membership. So we're going to have to work on that. On um, who does what, um, but that's kind of how we're seeing communication, which is next. Membership and outreach is going to be doing things in the public so that we can not only um, influence membership, but also reach out whether it is to have the democratic point of view involved in different um, boards. Claudia Muller has been really awesome about giving me information about all the different boards on the, you know, in the city um, government that have people, some of them have um, a lot of our people on them, but some do not. And some have a lot of vacancies. And who would be interested in going and representing us? So that's part of outreach. Another part of outreach is just um, being a vocal Democrat. And I don't mean Angry Democrat, I just mean a present vocal wow. Democrat at the group you already at the group you already belong to. You know, so that people know, oh yeah, she's in the MCDC. We can ask her questions, and you know, that we are representing our group in a positive way out in the community. Um, anything I'm missing, uh, guys, Darian, that from that one thing that we mentioned when we were talking about outreach was that we have a lot of like-minded organizations in the community that we can be doing more to make sure we can know that we support them and support us as people, they support us as well. Mm -hmm. So if you, like our member of one of the Convention of Legal Women Voters, we would like to make sure that they know they have our support and that we have their support as well. So how much has to do with talking to those other organizations that are in the community and maybe building some sort of uh, partnership with them if the event is right, if the time is right, and Offering assistance to people, like you said, are like minded, and we feel like they would help us when it comes to elections. Yes. I think a, a, a good example of this might be also uh, having a democratic record of public comments at the city council already. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. School board, right, all of that. And, and then being able to report back and say, you know, something concerning came up, or, you know, or something that we really want to get behind came up, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Right. I, another thing I will say, when we were speaking of the planning committee, uh, the idea came to my mind of us, or the MCDC having a good idea of what events are happening in the community that are not just politically based, but if there's a certain, like an art show that is opening or someone's having a dinner of some sort. The only that we feel like we can be at or we should let the, our members know about, we should keep a calendar. And that would also include city council meetings and board meetings, things that we want to be represented at. But also, we want to make sure that people know that there are things to do in Columbus and that there are people that are like minded out doing things we're trying to make the community better. Um, so, we address the communication being separate. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at our old list. One of the things that's on here that I don't think that we can really actually do. And I think that it's something that we that's incorporated into almost every other subcommittee we have is voter engagement. Mm -hmm. It was it seems from the description that it was meant to be a, a voter registration type um, mm -hmm. subcommittee. And we as Demo the Democratic Committee can't do voter registration right now. Um, yes, Val. No, it wasn't exactly a voter registration, but voter information. It information to voters, you know, about different things how to want to vote. Mm -hmm. that was okay. And I think that will be covered also in like the communications um, aspect of our, you know, because what we're doing is talking 
to our members, but also to the public in general and, and voters. Oh. So, um, oh, so I don't. Yes, Val. Yeah, sorry. That was when we go out organizing different meetings, different uh, groups, like the national group or the Asian group. Mm -hmm. We give them information how to vote, how to do this I think um, that two things that one is something that we haven't addressed yet and that we're not going to address in depth in this meeting, but one is something that uh, is just going to fill that function is an effective post committee. Mm -hmm. You know, is, is actually people going out there talking to the people in their own district, the Democrats. Now, the the others that aren't in our membership or that aren't listed in um, Vote Builder as strong Democrats, they can still be reached and, and the voter um, registration piece can still be done. But I think it may be better served to, be, to, to use the organizations that already do that, um, like the League of Women Voters, like a lot of other groups do voter registration. However, another part of it which might also help here, but that I, I don't, I'm not ready to talk about yet because I haven't thought it through. Um, is uh, caucuses is actually forming different caucuses within mm -hmm. our group. We there's um, you know Latinx, there could be LGBTQ, there could be a female caucus, there could be a military caucus. So just organizing groups that maybe want to meet separately, uh, whether it be just to talk about issues to address certain populations that are underserved or underrepresented or undertouched by us. So um, that's those are my thoughts. Anybody, I'm not, I've never, I have no experience with a real caucus, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be help there. Yes, sir. And I'm, I'm interested in saying how we can further develop the caucus because we never really like hold off of those, but I did set up a page like on Facebook called Hel Muskogee Democratic LGBTQ uh, Caucus and what have you and uh, and basically just talking about LGBT related events like the capital, um, the federal, state, or even local and, and even because I know Jeremy Hobbs like he puts out a lot of LGBT stuff so mm -hmm. um, we can definitely like, be pressing those. Also African American Caucus and uh, that's something that we could, we could definitely engage in because of the, uh, the history of African American engagement with the Democratic Party. Very <coughs> story. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To finish this part of, or at least my part of it, is affirmative action. And that will stay. Um, what I'd like to see is more presentations from that group, uh, people coming in to talk to us about that. How do we ensure that everyone is touched, reached, um, the, main, the effort is made to engage with all the different groups. How do we do that? So that will be one. And then the last one, this is something new, um, and that is campaign. Actually, it's not new. Let me see what it was called. It was called Candidate and Intraparty Relations. But I'm kind of looking at it in more of a you know, candidate, and this is going to work really closely. In fact, it almost kind of duplicates the post committee, one of the post committee um, functions, and that is identifying, recruiting, helping to train, and supporting candidates to run for office, Democratic candidates to run for office. And so, um, what I came up with this morning after we were just stuck on verbiage last night, and so I said, oh, we'll get it. But, uh, campaign and candidate support. Uh, I really think that uh, if that one of the functions of a strong democratic committee is to is to support those people that are running um, and help them, you know. So, so maybe one of the next, and I have a couple of contacts, but maybe for the uh, events and education committee for for April, um, we could have some people come in who have run for office and successfully run for office or not, but talk to us about what people should be thinking about now, this early out, who might be thinking about running for office uh, next year. Because next year at this time, it's gonna be close to primaries. You know, so people need to start planning and thinking and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's just an idea. 
But um, those are our subcommittees. Any in the um, reminder of brevity and to the point. Any questions? Knowing that we have not fully defined these yet, but I tried to kind of give you a general idea of what we're talking about. Here. Any questions or any gaps that you see that we should be doing that we served? Yes, Harris. Yes. Hi. Can I uh, ask you guys <coughs> Oh, okay. No, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, by, uh, bylaws, can we rename that or retitle that to bylaws and resolutions? Because I think that resolutions are, especially as we're going to be like, involved in the community, as, uh, as uh, Darian mentioned, that in addition to the humanitarian aspect, we also have to, um, and this is something that, that uh, intersects also with the with, uh, membership and outreach, with communications, right. that, we, uh, that we make clear where we stand on issues, and we say, we took a resolution saying that we, you know, like, say, on counts, on water, on climate change, what have you, that, um, and, I, and I don't know where a resolution would fall under, but we do have that provided for under right. yeah. And we have something like that, too, already in the Bible. Right. It's something to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. A thing that I would like to shy away from right. is presenting this as overly monolithic on policy. Mm -hmm. right. uh, if we have disagreements on that, so I would like that to be not something we hide. If we have disagreements about climate change or some reason or some detail about healthcare, I would like that to be a transparent thing. Mm -hmm. So resolutions are definitely something we can take up. Yeah. Uh, they're not ones that want to be sweeping or definite at this moment, right. but it's something to consider. Right. I definitely think it's something to consider, and I think that we kind of, there are a couple of things, um, like in the bylaws already, um, thanks, Walter. Say hi to the grandchildren. <laughs> um, the principles that are listed in the bylaws are kind of, uh, I'll just read off a couple of those things. Wealth and status are not entitlement to exploitation. We support labor and the right to organize labor, stuff like that. Right. So um, that's definitely something the bylaws committee is going to be able to say their teeth into for sure. Right. Thanks for bringing that. Right. And and I, I think this is uh, just like that too. Like especially when referendums come up here in the local level, mm -hmm. I think we, we especially like the ones we had in the last few years that those are like also something that we can also if not resolution. Something where you can make a statement of support or. Okay, cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the only one um, I, I kind of wanted to mention was campaign and campaign support. Mm -hmm. um, because I totally agree that our role is to help candidates and campaigns and how they get the democrats elected. Right. But I think we just need to be clear in the description that it is a support and not we run your campaign. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Because I have seen. <laughs> People expect that? Yes, a really? lot of people show up and they go, I'm running as a Democrat, even though I'm running for school board. But I'm a Democrat anyway, you need to help me come and run my campaign. I get that. And so we, I think we just need to be careful kind of in that wording and in the description that like, it is support, like support is a key word, right. not right. management. Right, not management. Yeah. Support, not yeah. management, that's yeah. the key. Yeah. Yes, Harry? Um, who would, I guess, would be membership and outreach? I would say go, and this is not, this is slightly related to caucuses, but these are like, uh, we're talking about affiliated groups too. So, say, uh, Democratic women, because we don't have a chapter here, young Democrats, I'm the vice president of that, and Patty, of course. Um, also, uh, Georgia Stonewall Democrats as well, that those are not necessarily caucuses, but affiliate organizations to state party. And how do they, I guess membership and outreach would be something that could go through, but like also engage with those organizations too, and try to attract them to kind of follow right? Yeah, that would be the idea. Cool. cool. Okay. Any other questions or criticisms? Or... Um, let's give um, uh, Sean a moment. Uh, my question is for things that are more general to. Uh, Making sure that not just people in our group or people who are active Democrats on vote voter, but just general people in Columbus, I guess, more aware of certain issues 
Would that fall under evidence of education, a function of outreach, or communication? I think that that would fall under a couple things. Um, and we're going to talk, the last thing that we, well, actually, not the last thing, but uh, almost the last thing we're going to talk about is more specific on post member duties, because it won't just be vote builder strong Democrats that you'll be talking to. It will be anybody that you might invite to a special event or or anybody that you might encounter at an event you attend. Say, you know, Pops Barnes is doing an event in his uh, community and, and we'd like to ask if you can be there and, and to talk to, to, you know, people in that district. Uh, so that's one way. The other way is communication, is, is through that segment because we have a public Facebook group we, um, we all, anybody on Facebook can share our information to anyone, you know, or, or our friends list, you know. So to kind of put that out there, that's another viable way of doing outreach because when people know you on Facebook and um, they start to think, okay, you know, especially if they're middle of the road people or uncommitted, you know, and thinking, they're pretty cool. I like what they. I like what he has to say. I like what he shares. And he's a Democrat. Hmm. You know, it's just a, a way to plant that. So um, I would say that communication and and also our events are usually, unless it's something sensitive or just for our community, um, uh, are usually public events. Sometimes um, we co-host with. Um, in other groups that I've been in, we will have, you know, ask a, a legislator to come and do a town hall meeting for us and then it'll get it to the public to just host it. So those kind of things. Some of the events, not many the events and education subcommittee will um, be able to address some of that. Um, Pat and then Claudia. I think it's important to say that the activities that the local party might participate in doesn't have to necessarily fit in any one particular um, mm -hmm. committee that subcommittee that's named here, mm -hmm. but just to think about an activity that's going to be engaging and informative or whatever and not get so bogged down on what committee it would fall under. Yes. Would fall under. And that's, I think, um, you know, some of us, I'll say me, I can speak for myself. Um, having been on the on the wider committee for the last year and thinking, oh, I'm just going to get in there, clean those up. <laughs> yeah, okay, that was funny. It doesn't. I mean, it was difficult, and it's not. It's not pieces of the pie. It's it's like a big trifle. You're all mixed. You know, some touch others, and right. and so and that's a challenge. It's actually a really big challenge in my experience with the um, PR and communication subcommittee is you know you should be communicating or working more with outreach um but they have a different meeting and gosh i don't even want to go to another meeting but, you know so that's going to be one of our challenges to keep in mind is how do we work together in a way that doesn't make that doesn't times five more work yes um, just one quick thing so uh, one thing i want to say about affirmative action is that have to um, uh, affirmative action is a one subcommittee that we always have to have, so I just so yes. that's probably clear. But mm -hmm. one has to say. The other thing I can say about like success of subcommittees, my experience in the past has been that um, one of the issues we've had is that there's not kind of a middle person between the different subcommittees, and so I think that's we need to make another subcommittee. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think that's, that's where you guys on the executive committee kind of fit in. And ensuring that we kind of have oversight of people who become chairs. And that's some of our duties. Yeah. That there are so yes, jobs. they are, yes. And I think that was where, not, and I say this to love everybody, but I think that was where we have kind of fallen short in the past is that that duty was not really <laughs> being taken as seriously. Yeah. Yes, yes. So. Okay, agreed. I was going to suggest that because you said you're going to send us out additional information mm -hmm. that in the interest of time tonight that we not discuss this further until we see what you're going to provide for us in writing and and i agree that the idea of some coordinating effort among the subcommittees mm -hmm. is going to be the way to deal with the overlapping interests that, that are 
I want you to be there. Mm -hmm. You need to be there. Mm -hmm. So maybe we just wait until we have further information to discuss this. And I think that's a great idea. Yes, ma'am. So according to the descriptions of the officers, the first vice chair is the ex officio member of all the committees. So that's part of his function is to be that liaison to do everything in coordination. Yeah. You might have that when you ran for the customer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, that was a really small <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, should we vote on accepting these names or descriptors or wait until the thing is, is that I feel like it really seems like more like information. <laughs> Okay. Now, wait a minute. The next meeting that we have as a group is May 14th. Right. So, that's, saying that we're going to hold off on accepting these. That's the not, next. that's my question. My intent was actually to try to vote on this, and then we're going to work on the verbiage, get it out to you, say, within a week, and then get people to sign up. Because I don't want to wait until May that's right. to get people working on this. So, can we. Um, we vote so I make on a motion to accept the subcommittee um, titles. Second. Now it's time for that second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Questions? Excuse me, before that, any other further? And any opposed? Opposed. Okay. Thank you. All right. This is um, something open I want to ask you about because it's something that I can't, that I'm, I have feet in, I have, I have, I can see both sides very clearly and I see the, the positives for both sides. And that is membership. We have had, up until now, on our website, it says, you know, that it's $20 suggested donation to be a member, and you send in, uh, we got the P.O. Box thing resolved, by the way, so I have your stuff and you're good to go. Um, that, you know, it's $20 suggested uh, fee, and that you're a member. I see that it's a good value to have people invest monetarily in a, um, an organization like this. But I also know that the, I don't know if the record keeping has been up to date with people sending in money, lists of people who have, who, who have, are official. And so, and I also know that we really did next to no fundraising. The $20, that's really all we had coming in for a really long time. And so, on one hand, my first instinct is to say, membership should be free. But then we develop more fundraisers, like t-shirts, and car magnets, and um, maybe we have some other kind of luncheon events with the speaker that people have to pay to go to, and that kind of thing. And we use, we just allow, everyone in, um, we, keep, we keep track, the way we track them is to our email list. And then that we fundraise separately. But then, you know, there, there is, you know, Darian and I talked about this, there is, um, you know, value, like I said, in, in having people intend to give you their contact information and give you their $20. And Harry has sent me a, um, an online platform that we have not had before on the website that would make it easier for those that are that are used to that kind of signing up for things, you know. And it's um, Act Blue, which is a common um, political fundraising uh, platform we use on website. So we would be able to make it easier to sign up. We could get their contact information and their money. And they could just add more if they wanted to, or they could add none. So, what are your thoughts? And let's do this until seven thirty. Okay. Yes. You have to be twenty dollars. Nope. Yes. I'm um, 
that have to be twenty dollars. That have to be twenty dollars. What would you think, Denzel? Ten dollars? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. A little less, and we could even tier it, like students. Yeah. And then now, just just throwing it out there. Okay, let's. I'm gonna. I saw your hands on you, and then I got you guys. So. Um, I like the idea of a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, with tears, I also would like to say thank you for doing a wonderful job of pulling this all together because we've been trying to pull it together for years. And I really enjoy what it is that you're doing. So I agree that we should do uh, a couple of those things together. And we're definitely, what, whatever we discuss here, if we say, we're going to charge for membership. We're still fundraising. Those things are still going to be happening because we can't rely on one big gala a year to do all of our expenses. Okay, not from you. Let me go back to Claudia and then Rick and then. Um, I would ask for. I would suggest that we balance all of that. I think we need some of all of it. When you start doing fundraising, you get to a point. Where you're investing more in developing the event than you're going to get in a return. And also, you tend to fundraise the people that you're trying, you know, mm -hmm. it's the members that are constantly, I've been in a group like that, many groups. Well, like we that. Of all of it, but I see you when I need to let me go to Rick. You're talking about, you're talking about a tier of mm -hmm. mm -hmm. These are suggested donations. It would have to be, since we can't. Right. Okay, Dominic, then Juanita. Okay. Who's mm -hmm. Juanita? I know I'm going to be killed for what I'm trying to say. Oh! 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 You can give a $20 ad a donation. Mm -hmm. You're not saying you charge, mm -hmm. but you can say $20 or more as a donation. Right. Right. That's the way I would say $20 as a donation. Right. 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 I agree. Not, that was not that was not controversial. Okay. <laughs> yes, Harry. Yes. Um, just to mention that a, a, good, a good model, a good example from here in Georgia of a uh, tiered membership is uh, is Com County Democrats. Their website uh, says the membership is free. Like you just have to self-identify and you have to control, blah 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 to be a general member. But then what they have as like elevated tiers membership are a governors club of, um, if I'm correct. Um, $500, um, or $500, and as a couple, um, you can do $800 uh, as, a, as a partner and spouse now, and a chair. So I, so I love the example of the tiers. Yes. We're talking Cobb County now. We're not, you know. Right. However, <laughs> it, just as an right. aside, um, ever since Michael, what was his name? The guy from Cobb County? Michael Owens. Ever since Michael Owens came and spoke to us um, last year at the NCPC, I have followed, I'm on their email list. I save it in my little email file just to go through and pick and copy things that he's mm -hmm. doing that because mm -hmm. he's that good. Right. So um, I would suggest, and maybe I'll put that out in a post or an email to do the same, you know, because it's going to help almost in every function of uh, any committee that we're on. Um, Kat and then Susan. I, I think that we have to do a combination of all, all of these things, but the electronic opportunity to give needs to go out on all of our communication and action because Muskogee County is, is paying for it. Yes. And they have people who want to support um, the local party but may not want to come in. Right. And do the, right. You know, and participate yes. in the meetings that would support the party. So we need to send that out constantly mm -hmm. like we do, like we get from the national and state mm -hmm. to, you know, send money to support the effort. And we're going to have to do that. I agree. We're going to have to do that for the local Democrats that are here. And um, before Susan, I just was pointing at Judy because Doug McLeod emailed me or called me and left me a nice long voicemail about, you know, a lot of the contacts that they have for the, there's some moneyed Democrats in this town that aren't here. Mm -hmm. But, and aren't going to come here. Right. right. And it's okay because really, <laughs> Am I being silly? They would be glad to. In fact, they really would like to have information about what's going 
Awesome. Mm -hmm. and they don't want to participate as a group. Right. So I would. I call that closet Democrats. <laughs> 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 I see. I want to bring them out. I want to bring everybody. They don't want to be out of the I know. They can't be because either in their business or right. whatever. They have to provide yeah. the, the media. Mm -hmm. Listen. Mm -hmm. uh, if we use the Act Blue, we also have the option of. Uh, allowing people to make recurring donations. Yes. And that's one of the things that uh, that gentleman from Cobb County mentioned mm -hmm. when he came and talked to us mm -hmm. about people who pledged to do recurring donations. Did that really I did that with Stacey the... Abrams, yeah. Mm -hmm. Helps them plan. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Pat and then has it. And the other thing is we're gonna have to do those kind those kind of push um, off the election cycle because mm -hmm. people are going to give the records to the candidates mm -hmm. yeah. during the election. So, right. like 2019 mm -hmm. would be our time to do that push to mm -hmm. support the local. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. I see. All right. Uh, I, I still I think that, again, uh, conjunction of all of that mm -hmm. is important. I think because it's a college town mm -hmm. that we could really capitalize. Of the students that vote, right? I don't like college students. They vote. They vote. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you get them to get all this. They would do that. Mm -hmm. They would be more, uh, you know, more motivated to be involved mm -hmm. if they didn't have to call each other. I see you, Gary. Um, and I, I just before I I worked in America during the campaign at Georgia Southwestern University, was there, and they had a really active um, Young Democrats uh, organization there, and the the uh, Sumter County Dems would hold a welcome back uh, pop up for them every uh, August. Mm -hmm. You know, to kind of welcome back here, and that way they all got to know each other, and you know, so that is something I would definitely love um, to to do. You know, I, I remember that I was like, all right, that's why are we doing that? <laughs> CSU is bigger than Georgia Southwestern for sure. Um, okay, Gary Ibrick. Uh, yes, I uh, just to expand a little bit on uh, on, on Aklu for a few seconds. It's very, very highly useful in the United States ministries, like helping do communications for Valley Hass and Sparks 29. We really set that up. We raised thousand dollars to like uh, to keep to keep her in the uh, in the black, I believe, but uh, the black or the red? Maybe. I think it's the black. It's the black. Yeah. Okay, it's black. Um, so we so it allows you to do recurring uh, donations. It allows you to, like any level of uh, of amount of money you want to do. Um, the only thing is that it's like like PayPal. It's another it's a, another merchant and it charges three point nine five percent transaction fee uh, for any donation. But it goes straight to the bank accounts. No questions asked. But Ad Ad Blue is familiar. It is yes, familiar. And right. it's very different. Right. Oh, I'm awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think it's worth it. To have that reputable that people know, mm -hmm. um, secure, mm -hmm. let's hope they are more secure than any link we would just kind of put into our thing, uh -huh. um, way to transfer that money right into the account. So. Yeah. And it's permanent. We can have it on as long as we want on the website. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so she said, I think it's very important about you can do it ongoing. I think that's a big deal because in my life, mm -hmm. depending on what's going on in the news, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm more outraged than other times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. And so there's sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, we're going to give $20 to somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, you know, having something where you can do that, I think that would be a huge deal. I think it's important we don't call them back. Right. Like, say, yeah, <laughs> we, anybody who's given to any Democratic campaign online, you get, I, usually after the election, you spend a whole couple of hours unsubscribing, unsubscribing, yeah, yeah stop. Okay. But, you know, yes, sir. Um, we got another, three more minutes. So. Another, another Republican forming the new committee structure. Mm -hmm. currently have they are still in place, but most of them, the planning committee meeting, or the planning committee, which is now proposed to be the events and education committee, they're the only ones that I've heard of that are currently in place. I'll tell you why I am. Mm -hmm. I realize that we're going to have our next president in two months. Mm -hmm. It seems to me we could go ahead and, and, and act on Act 
<clears throat> the idea of tier membership suggesting was suggested donation levels or whatnot. Maybe we need to refer back to a membership. Sure, yeah. Study. Oh, totally. I just wanted to hear. I think it's important that you guys get the, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, a place to say what you feel like. And there's, if it was something, you know, I, I needed to hear that because I really wasn't sure what people were going to want to do. And I never actually considered both. I mean, I did consider that we would do fundraising because I wanted to hype that up, but I was. So this, this was just mostly actually for me, but also for you to be able to vocalize your opinions on stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, last thing. And most of you here are post committee members. Um, and this is no, by no means a training or anything like that. But I think it's more than I've gotten in the past about what it is to be a post committee member. Mm -hmm. And it probably will take me less than 10 minutes. So I just want to go over that quickly. Um, less than three, I know. Um, okay, so we've got everybody here, post committee members. Your job, and I'm going to read you directly um, the duties of the post holders per our bylaws, just so you hear that. It's in the app. Yeah, and I and I believe I already have. It's in that, but it's but I'll send it out as a specific bonus. Um, it says post holders are elected to four year terms by registered Democratic voters in their respective party districts. Post holders collectively make up the district post committee. So post holders identify and engage with Democrats and potential Democrats in their respective party districts, encouraging them to become general members of the NCDC, to support and volunteer in committee events and activities and with Democratic candidate campaigns, and to vote for Democratic candidates and propositions. So basically, reaching out to Democrats within your geograph, within your post, which is aligned with city council and school board districts. So you're going to reach out to them and just share information about the MCDC, what we do, let them know when our meetings are, you know, answer their questions. A post holder not only communicates with Democrats in her or his party district about important issues, but also gathers concerns and other input from Democrats to be presented to the district post committee for consideration. So you're going to give information, but you're also going to receive information. You're going to receive input from your the people that you are representing. <laughs> Oh, it's the dry air, it's the heat. Mm -hmm. Do you need any water or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, further, a post holder strives to identify, and here's where this comes in with the whole candidate um, recruitment. Uh, Democrats, oh, sorry. Uh, first, further, a post holder strives to identify among the Democrats in her or his district potential leaders and candidates, and to help encourage, orient, and train such persons to volunteer or to run for office. Each party district has several post holders who cooperate as a team to serve the Democrats in that district. And the post holders in the two at-large party districts, and this is for the bylaws, but this is also something that maybe the bylaws want to tweak if, if we feel like they need to. Um, the two at-large party districts facilitate the efforts of the post holders in the geographically specific party districts, one through eight. So basically what it's saying is that the at-large are going to help any of the, the committee, the, the one through eight posts. Our Democratic Party districts coincide with the consolidated government, municipal, and school system districts. You must be a registered Democrat voter residing in a party district to be elected as a post holder for that district. Um, and that is it. So that kind of clarifies things. Let's just go um, just a little bit. I just want to give you a couple of ideas that I thought about. Patricia and I got together when we were talking about this before we lunch. Um, having worked in a campaign with Vote Builder, it is very easy to go in. And we have access to Vote Builder. Tom has it, and we can have, we have it as a campaign. Um, hopefully, that I can get on my computer and you know get free 
by the time I finish it. Um, is you can pull up by district and by voting, either strong Democrat, moderate Democrat, you can, yeah, what medium? Is that what it is? Leaning Democrat, that's right. Um, you can pull up by um, post lists of them and you can use those to do phone banks if you wanted to. So say the five of you and your post get together and they uh, and you want to do a phone bank uh, evening or a Saturday or something like that. Hi, Rachel, thank you. Um, you can do that. Um, we can get provide you those lists and you can split them up and just, you know, you kind of come up with a little script and, and introduce yourself and, and go that route. Or you can even have them, um, you can pull it up by maps. And so say one beautiful spring day in May, maybe somebody wanted to go out and wanted to go out as a group and canvas a certain area and knock on doors. You would only be knocking on doors on the, on the type of voter you wanted to talk to. In the Stacey Abrams campaign, you know, I'm just proud that I worked in it, but anyway, um, in the Democratic campaign, you we were going to Democrats that didn't always vote, people who didn't have a strong record of voting. But we may want to reach out to the strong Democrats, the people that always vote and always vote Democrat, and why aren't you in the MCUs? You know, so there's those kind of ways to do outreach. Um, and because, again, we're spreading our word, but we're listening to them. And that gives them another, I mean, that's, that's outreach. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they see, hey, they're out in the community. You know, and they're, they're coming and asking me my opinion and introducing themselves. Some people won't like that, but some people do. Um, you could also, um, my idea would be, though, to come up with a, specific um like a card or a flyer or something that we can leave for people and um also you can reach out to the representatives that are representing your district in city council or school council and talk to them about what events they might be having what needs they see in their district um that kind of stuff is all within your purview and you can hold your own events. You can say, all right, you know, distribute a flyer or do a phone banking um, day to invite people to come out to the District 2 um, meet and greet at, you know, the donor place or whatever. I have to just, <laughs> but then you can make up your own events and invite people out. So those are just suggestions. And so again, just to reiterate, the goal is to recruit new MCDC members and identify potential candidates. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Pat. I'll just make the suggestion that um, when it comes to um, messaging and recruitment and outreach and all these things that you listed, that it, it has to be centralized. Um, I don't think that the any anybody should just access vote builder. I mean, oh, yeah. and I don't think that anybody should just make up a word track. Mm -hmm. um, I think that needs to come from either the executive board or the mm -hmm. chair mm -hmm. to to generate the request if the if the post committee members say I want to um, reach out to strong Democrat. I mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. the executive committee or the chair should generate. Absolutely. Um, that information. Definitely. Uh, because there's a lot of personal information in there, number one. Um, and uh, not everybody should or could have that on their computer at all times. And also, it might be good for us to come up with a, you know, a strategy. Well, we don't want to have this one doing strong Democrats, this one, you know, we should right. be thoughtful about that. Right. And so uh, maybe that could be a topic for the next post committee meeting. Um, Darian, then um, Dominic. I don't know why we got out of here at 5 7. Oh, yes, we did. Well, we have to be out. We should be out of here by 7.45. So we'll wrap it up when we're back. Um, who did I? Um, Dominic. You can take a break. Well, we talked about what building more. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sure it will be brief. Um, yeah, what I was going to say about the searches and stuff like that, um, you can. You can set parameters on searches and save it for people. 
So um, instead of letting send people it to them as well, it can be saved on mobile. So when they log in, you know, they'll search as our web. I did it with. with can everybody Aaron. use minivan? And they don't um, have to have both over on their yeah, computer. Yeah, everybody can have minivan. Mm -hmm. So whoever you Which have. Which is a phone app for, yeah. for doing this. Yeah, so whoever you have both of their access to, you can just send them turn on minivan. Okay. Okay. All righty. All right. Thanks for being here. I've, um, Harry? Yes. Uh, can, before we leave, and I don't know if we if we, if we, if we if this is necessary, but like asking that I can make a motion regarding like a blue and recruiting that. Yes, you're right. Okay. Um, we can do that. Oh, cool. Um, well, I, Harry Underwood, um, move to uh, that we that, that we adopt uh, at Blue as a as means of uh, fundraising through our website and through digital media for the Minnesota County Democrat. And pass seconds. Okay. On uh, any questions? Any further questions about that? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed. Thank you. I move that we adjourn. Thank you, Pat. And on the seconds. Uh, I oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I will announce. Make my oh yes, yes, yes. Thank so, you. so for those of you who don't know, my name is Dominic Perkins. Um, I just wanted to let you know I was contacted by Dean Williams last week and was asked to chair the affirmative action committee for the community. So, uh, <laughs> Awesome. And it's great to be able to, because our affirmative action committee as of right now, I've never um, heard of them. So yeah, anyway, I, I think we'll have a direct line to get some good information yeah. and, and training. Okay. I, 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 I want to announce it. Yeah. I sent you an email, Laura, that you may want to send out, mm -hmm. but the vote today for vouchers failed 28 and 25, mm -hmm. but it's a possibility that it will come back up Thursday on crossover day, mm -hmm. so we need to still reach out to as many Democrats as we can across the state to call their senator. Mm -hmm. And and uh -huh. that's something we can talk about in the committee, but that's something that we don't do that much of as far as sharing. Harry does, but... They have a bunch on the board. Oh, yes. yeah. Yes. Um, um, but it's to close, it's to shut it down. And okay, I just, sure. But, but yeah, it is a moment. It is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. Well, then. We should we should have done announcements prior to the adjourn. So, <laughs> so I made the motion to adjourn. And second? Second. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. Second. No questions? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. And no one, you'll have to. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Cool.